Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to part seven, I think, of my end of season ramblings. And today, it's all about racing points year. Now, a lot of the talk heading into 2020 was about that racing point and just how similar it looked to the 2019 Mercedes. In fact, the topic dominated the early races and as it turned out, it was pretty much a carbon copy, a move that upset a lot of the pit lane, but certainly served the team well in the long run. The argument being that the team had used Mercedes drawings as a way to shortcut designing its own and move resources elsewhere. It went on for what felt like forever, but it was determined in the end that the brake ducks themselves were not illegal, but Racing Point had not followed the correct processes to create them. Therefore, they were penalised under the sporting regulations, which resulted in a fine and a deduction of 15 Constructors' Championship points, a deduction I said at the time probably wouldn't make all that much of a difference. Well done, Sean. A number of teams were set to appeal that ruling, feeling it wasn't harsh enough. However, after the teams and the FIA agreed on changes to the rules around all of that for 2020, the appeals were dropped and didn't end up in the International Court of Appeal. For the 100th time over the last three years, I am not up on all the technical talk around F1, but if you are interested in learning a little bit more or refreshing your memory on all of this, I will pop a link in the description to Chain Bear's video explaining it all. Obviously, having a copy of a championship winning car, you'd expect Racing Point to have a good season and they did for the most part. But I've got to say, it really does feel like a year of missed opportunities for them. If you look at it from a pure pace perspective, they probably should have finished third in the championship, and indeed would have if that points deduction hadn't been handed to them. It's hard to be too tough on them because fourth is still a really strong result, and as I'll go over later, they won a race in 2020 and picked up a further three podiums. And on top of their deduction, they did also lose Perez for two races and Stroll for one due to COVID. So perhaps they would have snatched some more points had that not happened. And maybe even with the deduction could still have ended up third. It was a fantastic year, but like I say, it could and perhaps should have been more. As for the drivers, well, Sergio Perez was absolutely exceptional this year. And despite missing those two races, he still ended up third in the driver's standings with 125 points. He took a shock victory at Sakir and made it to the podium in Turkey and actually, had it not been for his car failing at the Bahrain Grand Prix, he would have had three podiums on the bounce. Now, a few people keep telling me that he wasn't that good because he was well beaten by Lance Stroll early on in the season. So I'll go over the numbers on that. Let's take the first nine races of the year, so just over half the season. Checo was outqualified by Stroll twice and beaten four times in the race they both finished. So yeah, his first half of the season was not as impressive as the second half. But as always, they are just the numbers and none of that takes into account variables like, for example, bad strategy calls. Despite all of that, though, he still ended the season 50 points clear of Stroll, outqualified him 10-4 and outraced him overall 8-5. What I will say, though, is if we remove any DNFs for both drivers, it is actually four all in races they both finished. So in that regard, it's much closer. Look, I'm not having a go at Stroll and he did suffer his fair share of bad luck, but overall, there is no doubt in my mind that Checo was the better of the two over the course of the whole season. Perez has been superb in 2020 and deserves, in my view, that chance at Red Bull based solely on his performances, not just this year, but consistently over the last few seasons. A lot of people feel he deserves another chance with a top team, but this time with a car capable of challenging for wins and podiums, and he's now got to grab that opportunity with both hands now it's finally come his way. Oh, and just to finish this bit off, he is absolutely up there in the debate over who is driver of the season. One win, two podiums in total, scored at every race he finished and ended up fourth overall. What a year. Lance Stroll, to be fair to him, has also been good at times in 2020, but I have to say his season was certainly one of two halves. He silenced a lot of his critics early on and showed that if he has the car capable of challenging, he can deliver. And that is proven by some of the stats I've already gone over. He scored at each of the first seven races he finished, including making it to the podium in Monza, but it all began to fall apart after that. He was going well in Mugello before his car failed and was thrown into the barrier at speed, an accident that clearly winded him. And at Sochi, Charles Leclerc hit him and the Canadian crashed out of the race, so two DNFs in a row that were not his fault at all. And then he had to sit out the Eiffel Grand Prix after initially feeling unwell and then testing positive for COVID later in the weekend. He seemed to struggle for the rest of the year, but did join his teammate on the podium at Sakir, which was a much needed boost. And I also want to note at this point that of all the races he finished this year, he only actually failed to score once. The reason I mention a lot of that is because although I still think Checo was the better of the two, the deficit between them would almost certainly be smaller without a lot of what I've just mentioned. And I think despite all of that, he has had overall a very solid year. And of course, despite the incredibly difficult conditions... 
He did grab that awesome pole position in Turkey and did lead for over half of the race and had it not been for damage in a team strategy error, easy to say in hindsight of course, he could well have won it. That's not all though because Racing Point ran a total of three drivers in 2020 with super sub Nico Hülkenberg filling in for Perez at both Silverstone races and again for Stroll at the Nürburgring and do you know what? He impressed across all of those standings. It was gutting, wasn't it, at the time that reliability issues meant he couldn't start the British Grand Prix, but at the 70th anniversary Grand Prix, he qualified an exceptional third and went on to finish the race in seventh place and had the team not pitted him again, he could have been even higher. Then if you fast forward to the Eiffel Grand Prix, he was parachuted in with very little notice on Saturday morning where he did FP3 and qualified last, but despite next to no time in that car all weekend, he managed to finish eighth on Sunday. Some brilliant performances from him and a reminder of just what he can do in Formula 1. To quickly summarise though, a great year for Racing Point but it could have been much better although it's hard to be too critical of P4 in the standings and next year will be a whole new challenge with a new name and more intriguingly a four-time world champion joining them. That is it for this one though but you can as always let me know your thoughts on Racing Point season down in the comments section but also how would you rate their season out of 10, 1 being awful and 10 being amazing. Now I will be back with some more waffles soon with McLaren next on the agenda but in the meantime don't forget that you can of course follow me over on social media and all of the links you need for that are in the description down below. But as ever thank you for watching I've been Sean this has been the F1 word and until next time goodbye.